Hello and welcome to this afternoon's training call. Today we're going to continue with our setting up of an authority niche site in the RC model world um, example that we had pursued. Bill has asked that we cover some of the plugin settings and I wanted to also introduce you to a, a concept called the Amazon Store. Now I'm going to show you an example here. This happens to be a niche site. Hold on, let me see. Where's the demo? Give me a demo. Um, a niche site that sh that displays how to how to what an Amazon store looks like. And each one of this guy's niche sites has basically the same thing. So let me just show you what an Amazon store on a WordPress blog looks like. Okay. So he's put in a keyword of bodybuilding and he is displaying all bodybuilding type products okay including now this happens to be my wish list <laughs> which is embarrassing um, <laughs> can you tell what I read for pleasure um, and the Amazon wish list recognizes who the user is so for example if Carol came to this site on her browser her wish list if she had one in Amazon would be displayed here but the rest of this are products that are sold through Amazon through your affiliate ID. It also contains a searchable area. So, for example, if I wanted it, if I w came to this site and I searched for RC models, my store would not be able to display it because he's got a base keyword of bodybuilding. But if I were looking for supplements, for example, because it's within bodybuilding I should get results everybody see the difference so setting up an Amazon store is pretty quick and easy and if we have time at the end of the plugins I'd like to show you how to do that and add it to your blog okay so let's jump back into plugins and let's take a look at a few of those that do need settings set up now Bill you had mentioned Google XML sitemap so we'll start there it is a little intimidating from a settings standpoint however you really don't need to change much of this uh, until you get a little more advanced or you're doing things a little peculiarly but I will tell you what each of these settings do mean real briefly now this area at the top is pretty much just a status area for the last build so we'll come back to this in just a moment in your basic options we always want to make sure that the normal XML file is checked this is what Google reads to know what URLs and posts and pages are available on your blog and Bill if I could cite you as another example you have a videolove.com domain and under each uh, under subdirectories of that you have additional uh, videos uh, an additional site in this case classic Mustangs one thing we would do is let Google know that within the video love domain we have an extra page called classic Mustangs and we would do that by telling the sitemap you have an extra page does that make sense so the blog itself will be fully defined in this XML sitemap that we define for Google but in your case this is an extra page that is outside the blog so we would tell the sitemap this new directory that would would let Google know and they would come and crawl this site and add it to their index each one of these sub pages now write a gzipped file you want this always to be checked because some search engines do have the capabilities to read that type of file now what gzip is is a way to compress the XML file down to the relevant information in other words if your sitemap.xml file is one meg when it's all generated it's one meg thick a gzip file might be 200k so it 
produces a smaller, more compressed file that some search engines can read. So again, by default, these are both checked. I would leave them checked. Okay. Next is the building mode. A and again, these are right out of the box. This is checked. What this says is every time you add a new post, it will automatically rebuild your sitemap and then notify Google that it has changed. Google will come back out, see the new sitemap, and crawl based on instructions within that XML file. Now, that brings up a question, and let's define what that sitemap XML file really is. It is a series of instructions to Google about what kind of content it will find. And let me bring up RC Model World so you can see what our sitemap looks like right now. Now, XML was the original language developed by scientists that HTML grew out of. It's a set of instructions that tell Google, here's my main URL, and I want to give this 100% priority when you crawl. In other words, crawl this first. Here's another post, and it's not likely to change very frequently. Once it's out there, Google, I only need you to come review it once a month to look for new changes. So every time we add new content, we're going to get a new addition to the XML page. Does that make sense? And again, this is just instructions for Google. Here's what you're going to find and where you'll find it. Go crawl it, look for additional links, take a look at my content, and build your index based on this. Okay, enable manual building of the sitemap via the GET request. This is 99.9% .9 of the time not needed. Um, the sitemap software itself uses an HTTP request instead of a GET request. It's only if you're on a really peculiar hosting company would you perhaps need this. Okay, our next session is who do we want to update when it changes? Google, Bing, and Ask are the defaults. If you have a Yahoo Merchant or Publisher ID, you would put that application ID right here, and it would notify Yahoo as well. Now, Yahoo requires a fee, whereas Google will let you run pay-per-click ad campaigns and do all this stuff, and, and you set it up, and other than paying for the clicks, it's free. Yahoo does charge $150 to set up the account, which is why it's not checked by default. But if you have a merchant ID with, with Yahoo, put that here and check this box. The next setting is, do we want this plugin to add the sitemap URL to the virtual robots file? Now, here's how WordPress does it. D does everybody here know what a robots file is? Can we take a quick poll? Not really, no. Okay. Okay. A robot text file is a set of instructions to Google. In other words, when Google lands on a URL, it looks first for the meta tag that defines the robots file. And the robots file contains instructions for what the Google bots can and cannot do. In other words, let's say, for example, I have a download.